The trouble between Chili Palmer and Ray Bones started in Miami. Ray took Chili's jacket. Chili was eating lunch with his friend Tommy. When they finished, Chili went to get his jacket. It wasn't there. Who took it? Mr. Ray Barboni, the man said. He didn't take it. He just borrowed it. Really? Chili said. Tommy knew Ray Barboni's house. He also knew Ray Barboni. They call him Ray Bones. He works for Jimmy Cap. Tommy stopped the car in front of Ray's house. And you know Jimmy Cap, so get the jacket, but don't make Ray mad, okay? Chili got out of the car. Don't worry, I won't say anything to him. And he didn't. When Ray opened the door, Chili hit him in the face, walked in, and got his jacket, and walked out. Chili Palmer worked for Momo as a Shylock. People borrowed money from Chili. He always told them, Do you really want this money? I'm not a bank. If you don't pay me, well... He never told them more than that, and they always paid him. It was his eyes. Chili had very cold eyes, and Ray Bones had a broken nose. Chili Palmer was in his office a few days later, when Ray Bones walked in with a gun. But Chili had a gun, too. They started shooting at the same time. Ray missed, and Chili didn't. The bullet hit the top of Ray's head, two inches too high to kill him. Jimmy Cap and Momo heard about the problem between Ray and Chili and told them both to end it. It was over. And it stayed that way for 12 years until someone killed Momo in New York and Jimmy Cap got his business in Miami. This time, Ray didn't come with a gun. He didn't have to. He brought a big black man. Chili was at the hairdresser when they found him. Hey, Ray, Chili said. These guys can cut your hair so that ugly line doesn't show. And he pointed at the long line through his hair from the bullet. Ray didn't laugh. This guy, he said to the black man, doesn't know that he's out of work. I want to see the books, Palmer. Chili showed him the names of the people who borrowed money. What's this? Ray asked, his finger on the name Leo DeVoe. He hasn't paid. He died, Chili said. Airplane crash. It was in the newspaper. Maybe his wife has money. I don't care. Get it from her or pay it from your pocket. These are my books now. This is my money now, so you get it. As the two men left, Chili said, You know that jacket, Ray. I gave it to the poor two years ago. What jacket? Bones said, but he knew. Chili went to see Leo DeVoe's wife. I can ask her, he thought, but he didn't. He didn't, because when he went to see her, she told him, I'm sorry that he's not dead. Chili didn't say anything. Don't talk when you don't have to. They gave me money because of the crash. $300,000. Leo took it. I trust you, Chili, even if you are a gangster. You find Leo and the money, and I'll give you half. He died, Chili said. I read it in the newspaper. No, she said. His suitcase died. And she told Chili everything that happened. It was a good story. Harry Zim closed his eyes again. The sounds will stop in a minute, he thought. Then we can go back to sleep. But Karen couldn't leave it alone. Wake up, Harry. Somebody's downstairs. I don't hear anything. It was true. He couldn't hear anything now. There are voices, Harry. People talking. On television. 
Someone came in and turned the TV on. Listen, will you? Maybe it's the dog, Harry said. I don't have a dog, Karen said. Now, are you going down, or do you want me to? Harry got out of bed and put on a T-shirt. Coming down the stairs, he could hear the TV. Probably one of Karen's actor friends trying to be funny. The television was in the next room. Harry opened the door. The blue light from the television disappeared and the light on the desk went on. A guy that Harry didn't know was sitting there. A guy in black. Dark hair, dark eyes. He said, Harry Zim, how are you doing? In a quiet voice. I'm Chili Palmer. The man's dark eyes stayed on him. Where have you been, Harry? Have we met? Harry asked. We just did. I told you. My name's Chili Palmer. Come over here and talk to me, Harry. The guy wasn't bad, Harry thought. Not a bad actor. He said, Harry, you looking at me? I'm looking at you. Harry said, but I don't have a script, so I don't know what you're talking about. You don't have a script, Chili said. Well, do you maybe have $150,000? You remember Las Vegas, don't you? November of last year? Now Harry wasn't sure. Was this real? How far do you want to go with this? The guy held out his hands. We're there, Harry. Las Vegas. You owe Dick Allen a hundred and fifty thousand. This wasn't a script. Harry said, What is this? I thought that you were an actor. The guy almost smiled. Is that right? That I was acting? Harry picked up the phone. We'll see about this. Chili said, Harry, stop and think a minute, okay? It's hard to be a big, strong guy, a dangerous guy, Harry, when you're standing there without any pants on. Talk to me, Harry. And Harry talked to him. He lost most of the money on a football game, he said, and then he lost the rest of it on cards. Trying to get your money back, right? But when you have to win, Harry... That's when you lose. Everybody knows that. And from what I hear, Harry, maybe the money wasn't yours. Maybe it was for a movie. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't know what you're talking about, Harry said. I'll pay Dick Allen. I'll call him tomorrow. Now, can I call you a cab? Go back to bed? The guy didn't want a cab. He said, so you make movies? That's what I do, Harry said. Chili said, I think I got an idea for one, for a movie. And Harry said, yeah? What's it about? Karen was worried. She came out of the bedroom and stood at the top of the stairs, listening. She heard Harry's voice. He was saying, can I call you a cab? And then something she couldn't hear. And then Harry's voice again. Yeah? What's it about? Hollywood's favorite words. Someone was selling an idea. She waited a minute, and then she came down the stairs. They were drinking together when she came into the room. Karen? Harry said. Say hello to Chili Palmer. Dick Allen sent him. Chili. This is Karen Weir. Karen Flores, she said. That's right, Harry said. You changed your name back. Chili looked at her and saw a very pretty woman. Not like in her movies, but still pretty. Karen, he said. It's nice to meet you. He's telling me an idea for a movie, Harry said. It's not bad. Tell Karen, see what she thinks. You want me to start over? Chili asked. How did you get into my house? Karen asked him. 
The back door. It was open. I mean that it wasn't locked. So you just walked in? But she didn't sound mad. You want to hear his idea? Harry said. This guy. Everybody thinks he's dead. They even pay his wife because he died in this crash. Go on, tell her. He owes money to a Shylock, Chili began. He can't pay and he's scared. He wants to get away. He buys an airplane ticket. But there's a problem at the airport. He doesn't get on the airplane. His suitcase goes on, but he's in the bar when the airplane leaves. And he's still in the bar when the airplane crashes, killing everyone. His luck has changed, he thinks. He's dead. He doesn't have to pay the Shylock. Then some people from the airplane company come to see his wife. They tell her that they're very sorry about her husband and they give her a lot of money. The guy takes the money and goes to Las Vegas. There he wins more money and he comes here to Los Angeles. After that, I don't know what happens. That's it? Harry asked. That's your great idea for a movie? That's half a movie with holes in it. Some of it is good, but they just give the wife the money? Karen smiled. Harry doesn't realize that it's a true story. The airplane crash in Florida, I read about it in the newspaper. That's where you got the idea, Harry said to Chili. And then you thought of the rest. No, Harry, it's all true. Everything that I told you. Harry said, wait a minute. You're not the guy, are you? No, you work for Dick Allen. Dick Allen wants him. Dick Allen wants you, Harry. He wants you to pay him. But I am looking for the guy. Harry, Karen said, maybe you still haven't woken up. He's the Shylock, Harry. Harry didn't say anything at first. Then he started talking about Chili's idea again. You know what the problem is? There's no good guy in the story, Chili said. The Shylock's the good guy. And to explain this, he told them about Ray Bones. When he finished, Karen said goodnight and went back to bed. Harry wanted to talk more. He asked Chili, Your work is dangerous, isn't it? I mean, the trouble with Ray Bones. He still wants to kill me, Chili said. And he doesn't know about Leo DeVoe, does he? Chili said no. You carry a gun, don't you? Chili looked at Harry. There was a little smile on Chili's face. Harry, he said. You're asking a lot of questions. You want me to do something for you? Ask me. And when Harry didn't say anything, Chili said, Listen, when I came to L.A., I asked people about you. Dick Allen isn't your only problem, is he? Other people want their money too, right? Harry said, Look, these guys came to me. They've put money into two of my movies. They were very happy with them. So they wanted to put money into another one. It'll be a good movie. Harry, you took their money and you lost it. You haven't told them about it. Why not? Because, Harry said, these guys scare me. Then why did you take their money to Las Vegas? I had to. There's another movie, a great script. I need half a million dollars to start. And these guys, why not ask them? No, Harry said. He didn't want to. The wrong people for this movie. This movie was too big. Then what's the problem? I told you, Harry said. The money. I need a star. I know the perfect man but a meeting with him costs half a million dollars. Who's the man? Chili asked. Michael Weir. Chili said, 
Yeah, he's good. He played the gangster in that movie, The Cyclone, didn't he? I like him. Have you talked to him? He's seen the script. I sent it to him. But I can't talk to him about it. Not without half a million dollars. That's Hollywood. So I thought about Karen. She was married to him. Did you know that? He'll listen to her if she asks. You asked her? No, I can't. I ask her and she'll say no. It has to be her idea. Then she'll do it. Maybe I can ask him, Chili said. Get your meeting for you. Or maybe you're thinking about Leo's money. Ask him, Leo, you want to put money in a movie or you want to go to prison? Something like that. Having Leo in the movie, that's better than having those guys? The ones that scare you? Harry didn't say anything, but Chili understood. I can talk to the guys. Tell them to wait, if you want, Harry. When Harry went back to bed, Karen was still awake. Did your new friend leave, Harry? No. I put him in the room behind the kitchen. He's sleeping. Harry, Karen said. The guy's a gangster. Then, said Harry, he came to the right town, didn't he? Harry took Chili to his office the next day. Chili promised to help him, but Harry had to listen. First, you don't tell them my name. You just start talking to them. You don't tell them about the other movie. You can't make their movie now. You'll make it later. Don't explain, right? Now tell me about them. There are two of them. Ronnie Wingate is a little rich boy. He likes to play with guns. Bo Catlett is the other guy. He doesn't talk much. Wears nice clothes. He's Mexican or something. I don't know. Chili was looking at the photographs on the office walls. There was a good one of Karen. He was thinking, there's something about her. And then Harry said, they're here. Chili stayed where he was, at the desk. Ronnie Wingate came in first, looked at Chili, looked away. Hey, Harry, what year is it in here? He said, looking at the furniture and the photographs. The other one, Bo Catlett, was taller than Ronnie, and he was black. His skin wasn't very dark, not much darker than his shirt, but he was black. Bo sat down and said, How are you? To Chili. What brings you here? The movies, Chili said. This is my friend Chili Palmer, Harry said. Wonderful, Chili thought. Harry's already forgetting. Where have you been, Harry? Ronnie asked. Three months and you haven't called. New York, Harry said. I had some business there. But there's no problem. I'll make the movie. A little later than I thought, maybe in the spring. Ronnie didn't like it. What are you telling us, Harry? Chili held up his hand. Harry? Harry, you're going to make their movie, aren't you? Yeah, Harry said, but I have to make another movie first. I promised this guy, years ago. Chili wanted to hit Harry. Don't explain and don't talk about the other movie. Ronnie said, what is this? Where's our money, Harry? Do you have it? I want to see it. Chili said to the little rich boy, hey, Ronnie, look at me. This surprised Ronnie. He looked at Chili. So did Catlett. You bought a piece of a movie, Ronnie. You didn't buy a piece of Harry. He'll make your movie. You heard him. You understand? We're doing another movie first. That's how it is. Who are you? Ronnie said in an ugly voice. I'm the man who's telling you the news, Ronnie. Ronnie turned to Bo Catlett. Bo? Chili looked at Bo now. 
Bo asked Harry, What's the other movie? Chili said, Harry, I'll answer that question. But first, am I talking to you or am I talking to him? He said, looking at Ronnie. Bo said, You can talk to me. That's what I thought, Chili said. The other movie? That's not your business. And he kept his cold eyes on him. Now it was between the two of them, until Harry picked up the script and said, This is it, Mr. Lovejoy. It's nothing, not your kind of movie. I don't know, Bo said. Why not put our money in that one? What's the problem? I'll think about it, Harry said. After Bo Catlett left Harry Zim's office, he went home and changed his clothes. Bo changed clothes two or three times a day. He liked to look nice. Then he drove to the airport. Bo had a ticket, but he wasn't going anywhere. He was waiting for someone. The bear was with him. Bo was thinking about Chili Palmer and the bear. Mr. Palmer, meet the bear. The bear was a very big man. Bo and the bear were waiting for Yayo. Yayo was nobody, but Yayo had something for them. And they had $170,000 for Yayo. The money was in a locker right here at the airport. They see. Now Bo saw Yayo. The man was pushing people out of his way, a little gangster, very dangerous. Bo hated these guys, all of them like actors from the gangster movies. The bear disappeared. He was getting Yayo's suitcase. Yayo was walking towards Bo, towards his money. Bo looked to the right and the left. He saw them then a man by the door, another one on the other side of the room, policeman. Yayo said, Hey, where's the money? Bo said quietly, Don't talk to me. You're waiting for someone. Don't look at me. I'm going to sit down. When I get up, you sit in my chair. There will be a key on the chair. The money is in a locker. But don't go near it now. Wait. They're watching us. You understand? Not now. Chili Palmer was talking on the telephone to his friend Tommy. He was asking questions about Michael Weir. Some of the guys met him, Tommy was saying, when he made that movie Cyclone. He came down to 86th Street, wanted to see real gangsters. But forget Weir, Chili. You have other problems. Ray Bones is coming out to L.A. He knows I'm here? Yeah, Tommy said. I told him, but he already knew. He talked to Leo DeVoe's wife. What's her name, Faye? After he talked to Tommy, Chili called Faye. I had to tell him, Chili, Faye said. He hit me. I didn't want him to hit me again. Now everyone will know about Leo, won't they? Chili said no, he didn't think so. Bones wants the money for himself. When he put down the telephone, Harry showed him something in an old newspaper. It was Michael Weir with his new girlfriend. Chili looked carefully at the photograph. He knew Michael Weir's face from the movies, but he knew the other face too. What was her name? Nikki. Harry said. Not Nikki then, Chili thought. Nicole, a singer from Miami. I know her. Where's she playing these days? Harry said, I'll ask some people. Chili thought of something else. Hey, Harry, I haven't read this script. Do you have it here? Harry said no. He gave Chili his office keys. It's on the desk. Remember to lock the door when you leave. But when he got to the office, Chili didn't need the key. 
The door was open. Bo Catlett was sitting at the desk. Bo looked up and said, This isn't bad, you know, this Mr. Lovejoy. Chili said nothing. He was thinking, How did he get in here? Harry lied. He said the script was no good, but he was holding it like gold, wasn't he? So I had to read it. Now tell me if I'm wrong. Harry doesn't want our money in this movie because he has your money, not quite yours. Gangster money, I mean. I asked people about you. You're not in the movie business. Chili said, I am now. Bo smiled. Can I ask you, who will play Lovejoy? Who's your star? Chili said, we're getting Michael Weir. How are you doing that? I put a gun right here, Chili said, touching the side of his head. And I tell him, put your name on the bottom line, Mike, or you're dead. Bo laughed. Yeah, good idea. No more difficult actors. Tell me, have you read this? Chili said, no, not all of it. Read it now. Then we can talk about it, okay? I have some ideas. It's good, but we can make it better. Why not? Chili thought. I came here to read it, didn't I? When Bo Catlett returned home, the bear was waiting for him. We have a problem, the bear said. Yayo, he's still at the airport. Won't go near the money. The police are still there. Then we have two problems. The other one is this guy, Chili Palmer. He told the bear about Chili in the movie. Is he a real gangster or is he another yayo? One yayo is enough, the bear said. You want me to go to the airport, bring the little bad guy back to the office? Yeah, go get him, the bear left. Bo drove to the office, thinking about movies and money, living like the rich. Soon, he thought. Very soon. He parked in the garage and waited in his car. Where's my money? It was the first thing Yayo said when he got out of the bear's car. Yayo, Bo said calmly, you know where it is. You know the problem. So you wait a day, okay? In a loud voice, the smaller man said, No, it's not okay. Maybe I just go to the locker, take the money now. The police, they catch me. I tell them about you. Catlett said, Yeah? You wait here a minute, I'll be back. He left them and went to Ronnie's office. Where was it? He found it in the desk. He came back to the garage with the gun in his hand, his arms straight out. What are you doing? Yayo said, his voice still loud. I'm saying goodbye, Yayo, Catlett said, and shot him in the head. Now is it okay? He asked Yayo. The bear looked down at the body. You've done this before, haven't you? He said. Not in a long time, Catlett said. Chili didn't like the place much. The crowd was too young. He asked the barman about Nikki. She's downstairs. You in music? Movies, Chili said, walking towards the stairs. The room was almost empty downstairs. There were four guys at the far end, but he didn't see Nikki anywhere. He made a small sound, and they turned to look at him. The one in the middle, said Chili. It was Nicole, Nikki. She ran over and gave him a kiss. It's Chili Guys, from Miami. He's a gangster, a real gangster. She smiled. 